Hello and welcome to reducing client latency and time mods when running Cassandra on the, on the public cloud. Um, my name is Jan Eichberger. I'm a principal engineering manager for Cassandra in Azure. There's a little bit more about myself. I attended my first ApacheCon in 2005, was on Java Community Scholar ship, uh, set up my first Cassandra cluster for HP, connected in 2013. I'm now the principal engineer manager, I already said that for all the Cassandra stuff. And I'm the developer of Cassandra Proxy, and I got nominated with Cassandra Catalyst at this uh, Linux summit. It's really good and thankful for that. And I'm glad they have this program for people who are not who are non code committers. Uh, let's see what are the services we run here in Azure. We have, um, we're running uh, Azure Mesh Instance for Cassandra, which is basically the open source Cassandra. And we have 311, 4041, and 50 Alpha 2. Uh, as a service, you can you can just get a cluster and do that. And the other thing we're running is um, um, translation layer, which translates uh, SQL to Cosmos DB. That's that's the other service I'm responsible for. But we will focus for this on the uh, on the uh, open source Cassandra service. Let's talk about some definition. Latency is the time it takes for the data to pass from one point of network to another. Latency budget is where you define how much latency you can tolerate or how much latency there is in your application, how much latency is acceptable, and if the latency is one way round trip and all those things. The latency budget you have influences how much uh, money and how much optimization you need to put in either the things. If, you have in, if there's no really good latency constraints, then it doesn't make sense to, to kind of get, get really expensive things. On the other hand, if you have tight latency budget, you have to really, really optimize. Um, tail latency is is the high percent latency, so P99s and things like that. And people measure that, and, and tail latency can derail it. So you try to minimize that, and then that's another thing which is expensive to minimize tail latencies. And then timeouts is if the latency exceeds a certain time at a client. You usually often people do it like a two second timeout, even less. And then when when, when the latency is bigger than that, then you're basically having a timeout and, and have to retry or something. Um, do we actually um, care about latency? So cloud infrastructure introduces tail latencies. I don't want to hide that. So if you have other latencies like slow queries, strongly sized clusters, those are definitely bigger fish to fry. If you run data analytics workloads, um, most of our customers there don't really care about uh, best latency. If you're adding an item to customer shopping cart takes more than 20 seconds and he doesn't buy, that's an example where I would care about latency. And there might be other apps. You really have to go through the chain and figure out where you lose latency. And people do that with the e-commerce. So those are the customers we have, which are really latency aware. Um, timers and retries, as I said, uh, timers are caused when the latency exceeds the threshold. Um, but this is just an error and we just retry. And some people determine the session and do a new authentication, which then gets you the stamping hurt problem. And that's what I mean with adding a, a low to already strained, adding low to an already strained node, and then that causes you a lot. So sometimes it's even people do a failover in our, our cloud that they suddenly you get like a hard, thousands of, of authentications when they, when they fail from one region to another. So that's, that makes things not better in most cases. Or we hit other random nodes and overload them. So, so, so it's a double-edged version. So, so, so just retrying, in some cases, doesn't make things better. Um, so, so one way to fix it, and I give you the answer up front, and, and it's a speculative execution. So what you want to do is you want to reach out to more than one node. And then whatever node answers first, that's what you take. That only works for queries which are marked item potent. So it's very important to mark all your queries item potent. So, 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 so if you've seen the, the Netflix talk, they have um, a proxy or, or a gateway in between, which which marks all the queries item potent. So, so they so so they don't trust their app developers to do that right. And so, so there's definitely uh, there's definitely problems getting app developers to do that right. But but assuming you get that, so so it needs to be needs to be all marked item potent, and the thing will reach out and retry reach out and, and ask more notes and ever the first one wins. 
And the assumption you have here that all the replicas are not blacked with the same tail latency, which is usually a good assumption, especially in the cloud where we can spread things between availability zones and uh, regions. And as we, we made some sample code you see here, where we show you how to use uh, speculative execution. So you can definitely use that. It, and it's not necessarily Azure specific, so you can use it in other applications too. And so this, this uh, and so the speculative execution is is uh, trading basically predictability versus a slowed. So so because you're you're reaching out at the same time to to multiple nodes, that increases the load in your cluster. But because you think that um, not all of them are, bla are blocked by the same tail latency event, on average they will it will be faster. And so so you're basically trading predictability that you're that you're latency is, is between defined defined values for for more load and, and that's basically uh, what this slide was about so if you reach out all applicants at the same time we increase the load but our latency is pretty predictable and that's what we want so some people would rather spend as i said as you have to spend more money to get a latency down and would rather spend the money to have a more predictable load than vice versa Let's go to the next slide. Let's, um, so after we, we talked about solution, let's let's talk about where all those tail latencies come from. And uh, let me let me think about that. So so it's load. So so they have an, or a node is down or a node is unavailable. Garbage collection ones, which uh, stop the world. So there are other ways around that. But assume you have a stop the world garbage collector that will cause uh, tail latencies. VM maintenance. So where Somebody takes down the VM to do some maintenance, like a host update or hardware or whatever. A disk latency, that's a big one where, where the disk is latency. And, even, and there's even studies on SSDs that they have, uh, they have garbage collection if you don't have really good SSDs, then they will be blacked by latency events. And then the all time favorite and, and, and the source of a lot of trouble is network latency. Okay, let's go to the next one. So common low latency setup we've seen with our customers is they usually do local one reads because they want the fastest reads possible, but as they don't want to lose data, so they usually do quorum writes, local quorum to be sure they are not they're not doing, <laughs> no, yeah, they 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 don't want to have the latency from cross DC things. So how does this uh, look like a local one read? So 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 normally when you don't do anything with regular execution, so the client that's a local one, picks any of the replicas which have the uh, key, and then that replica goes to the disk and, and fetches it, or maybe it's in memory, and then returns it to the client. So, so one thing you need to know is how does maintenance work in Azure, it's probably similar in other clouds. And so most maintenance is done either while the VM is frozen or live migrated to a new host. So, so if we do maintenance in Azure, so if it's a, if a maintenance where we need to do hardware changes, we will freeze the VM, migrate it to a new host, takes a couple of seconds. That takes at most, as I said, 30 seconds. And, and while it's, and, and there might be degraded performance uh, leading up to it because freezing needs, um, and, and saving state needs the CPU. And, and also when, when you come back, that might might take some time before all the network and everything is back back normal. So, so it might be a few minutes degraded, maybe eight to 30 seconds where it's really stopped. So so, so Azure, we, we do that, uh, we, we don't do them all at the same time. It's not guaranteed, so usually do it by availability zones, but it's not guaranteed. So if there's a disaster or something, which then, then we have to be quicker. Uh, but, but I've never seen that, so it's always has been by availability zones very rolling. And some maintenance requires a reboot, and and we uh, we allow you to to delay reboots and things. Some maintenance can be delayed, others can't be. But it's always good to assume uh, uh, build your application that with this latent with, with with those events in mind. Uh, it's not like okay, it's, it's not like you can uh, get rid of them. They will come and get you one way or the other. So we watch that space, and and I don't think we are, we are any worse than the other clouds, or they are any better than we are. Okay, so let's see how that would work when the VM freezes. So I said that's that's uh, 
This happens from time to time. So we do our local one read. Our VM freezes. Usually it's eight seconds. So we, yeah, we, we, we looked at that quite extensively. And there's a little bit latency up to the freeze. And then we have a um, few seconds on the 10 seconds unavailable. Won't get a mark note down most cases. So, so, so they will just um, say hey, this though is slow because eight seconds. So, so, so when you look at all the timeouts, most people don't put in eight second timeouts in their in their node communication, more like 30 seconds or even more minutes. So so Cassandra's not marking that note down. And and anyway, you should probably, when you're on the cloud, not be so tight with uh, with thresholds because it's the cloud. And so by the problem is you they, this guy now has to wait eight seconds and maybe it comes back. So it's probably 10, 15, whatever many seconds until the, the, the thing happens. And so you have a really, really a bad tail latency event in that case. And I mean, you look at it uh, with the writes, what happens? So we do we do a local quorum. So which means uh, at least two of them need to reply. So in this case, on in this case, this one is frozen, so it won't uh, reply. Though the other two, they can still do that. So because the, it doesn't reply to the write for a while, so, you know, so, so it might get marked down in that case. And, the hindered, and then some hindered handoffs. So we have seen that for things. And and then and then if there's a race condition with uh, with a read, so so the problem is since the write didn't reach this thing, when it comes back up, then it has still the stale value. If you do a read on it, if if you do a local one read, you have inconsistent data until the hints are caught up. Um, so it's I'm telling you, so it's not ideal. So so there might be repairs which then make um, the reads. Bit slower, so 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 I'm not don't want to sugarcoat it. So this can be can it ripple on effects. Okay, so 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 what can be done uh, in the back end? So 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 yeah, saying well this is this is not great, but I want to do something about it. So what can we do? So we can fail fast. We can take the node out of rotation by switching off gossip native. So we have that in in Azure in our service. You can say hey please. Please take it out. So, so, so we get notified as there's something which tells us schedule events. Get notified, we can take it out. And and in that case, um, you you for a short period of time, you don't have all your notes available, but um, you also don't have the tail latency. Just need to change them. Another option is when we learn about something, we could evacuate a host or redeploy. Something we don't do since redeployment takes really, really long. And and you don't want to to do like a five minute thing for eight second event. That doesn't make sense. On the other hand, you don't really know <laughs> that this event you know, it's eight seconds could be eight seconds could be longer. And and as I said, it's uh, it's really difficult to to kind of handle it all on on, on the back end because uh, you don't really know the best would really be when when you get app developers on and they do speculative execution because it's 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 difficult as I said, and 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 there are many more error modes which this doesn't address, but speculative execution would cover. So again, uh, we everything to speculative execution. So, so as I said, uh, Asha will tell you. So so here we have the, the so so they give you something called um, scheduled events, which we listen to. And it tells you how long the duration is and when it starts and stops. And we noticed. So, so if you go by that, then uh, then it take then it takes at least a, a minute that they tell you a little they lay, they they were conservative so they tell you way ahead of time and it takes a while until they tell you it's over so so it takes it between uh, what did I say uh, two minutes here yeah. so so as I said we implemented that if you listen to that and if you put a setting in we will take the node or the the node out of rotation or multiple nodes if it's the same data center can configure it but to avoid this latency but we are not convinced that's perfect so anyway here you have an example um so we detect about plant maintenance it's some redeploy or whatever they're doing so see when it's happening and Azure is then stop the cassandra daemon so it flushes to disk if it if it does if it does a reboot might be worthwhile to drain but but it gets trained anyway when you when, when it gets rebooted and and doing all those things as i said uh, it's so 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 yeah, it is up a lot of development efforts. 
and it's mostly done to not to inconvenience your app team. But let's um, let's talk about another thing we have encountered. So so our our standard setup set is to use a network disk. So I know people use local disk too, but our standard thing is use network disk because they're more durable and that's a required configuration in Azure, right? And so let's see, we have a local one read. Go to Cassandra, go to network disk. Network disk for some reason it's a 20 second tail latency. So so that sometimes that happens. Networks and disks, and uh, and then the requests and reads pile up when that happens. You see here, the read stage appending is piling up. It increases memory pressure because more more pile up requests and memory pressure. Then potentially uh, the triggers mem table writes, which then also don't happen because you have the tail latency. And let me show that to you. So. So then, as I said, because of TNC, we have the calendar writes hitting that. So the requests uh, will be successful because we have the uh, have the other nodes are all happy, and the node will be marked down and in the hand of stored. In case of race conditions, again, you might get a stale value or no value. And and so this latency that's that has been a bane for us. Uh, it's easy to detect after the fact, so, so we can always. <laughs> And it after it happened, we know there was a distancy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if 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 you see it in on prem, then you might want to buy new disks or something. Uh, in, in in the cloud, we also have a storage team, actually quite large one, which looks at those things and then tries to work on them. And 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 we can try to second guess the team. So the only mitigation you have in that case, you can second guess them and move your Cassandra application to a different uh, different host. In the hope they have better disks there. Um, but that won't help with latency. But but might restore the throughput. So that's the thing. And and then the other thing we are now actively exploring. Maybe we're doing it wrong. So there's always the option. There's always thinking, yeah, what are we doing wrong? So we use preferred disks. And we use on this type. So, 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 so we, I talked with most people on Amazon. They use uh, ephemeral local SSD. Now, now, the other one. So, so what we implemented recently is to to step around the read latencies. Is we now have a ephemeral local SSD as a write full cache. So you get um. So basically, how it works is you 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 write for the local disk and the remote disk, but then predominantly read from the local disk. So it's um, not affected by uh, by any any uh, tail latencies on the disks, and and if you lose the ephemeral disk because the word ephemeral tells you might lose it, then the then then you, then we rebuild it from the uh, from the remote disk. So so yes, so we we got inspired by Discord. So here's a link to it. Then there's another technology is Fusion Rate, which is developed for SSDs, which also have garbage collection, um, garbage collection events where they become unresponsive. And and there's a latency detector there, the software rate level. So so that's something we also like a lot, but um, but but we went with the first one. But it does that let us know. Okay, so a little bit about network latency. That's that's something which is a little bit trickier to to deal with, because in in our cases a lot of times also intermittent. So, but, but as you get it, so we have a client, it goes to Cassandra, there's something in between which introduces five second la tail latency. The client might time out because it's often guns are set at two seconds. And, and if you have a retry policy, it will try a different node. If you, if you do what I told you, then it wouldn't matter with respect to execution. And, and the other thing is, so, so, so it makes it tricky in the network, in the cloud networking space, they have redundant routes. So some network packages will go the other route, which might be longer, and then they try this route, and, and then the, the node does a retry of the thing. So, so it's very intermittent. So I can't really say, uh, so, 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 so we are your computer people. So we like when something is broken or not broken. We really like, don't like this thing in between. Some, some packages are fast, some are slow. Then they get, yeah, anyway, so it's no good. So, so, so the rights are similar. You, you, Maybe it's between the nodes, so you can have that at five seconds, but you still get it. Node will mark down, that one doesn't have it. You can have an extreme example, what we call a network split, where, 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 the, where the right area network link between regions is broken, 
and and then then you get kind of split brain and things. It's well documented. But anyway, so so, so we only deal with the uh, with the with the uh, latency events. Uh, so what we monitor is we monitor read transmission. We don't have a read and, and, and transmission. We, we, we monitor read transmission. We monitor errors. We monitor coordinator weights, and we also have active probes uh, who, who usually try to contact. Um, I guess so basically one data data node or one thing down in Cassandra is trying to contact all the other other nodes in the network from every kind of fixed interval and reports back if that worked that didn't work and so so we. So, so in our practice, um, the active probes are the most effective, letting us know about network issues. The other ones are a little bit more non, non, uh, non good. <laughs> the, yeah, see a little bit there, but yeah, it's hard to hard to figure out. Um, so, as I said, most clouds have redundant routes. So do we in Azure, and so might might, which 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 is, which prevents complete loss, but it made um, have intermittent errors. And so we only uh, up and, 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 and if you go to a networking team, they only measure up to the VM. So if they need to investigate something, so if something goes wrong inside the VM, they won't know. So if you like one out of ports or something crazy. Or cloud in it is broken, uh, unattended update, mess things up and so, and so on. So you, you lose uh, accelerated networking called SR, call SRV IO. The network will lose that and things get slower, but they won't know any of that. They will just see, okay, it's all good to the host. If everything comes, we don't know what's going on. And uh, our, uh, yeah, it's best to redeploy in, in those cases because network problems, they have a lot of automation which fixes it. So, but but if it persists, then then it takes a while until it's fixed. And um, yeah, and I consider the network problems are the most difficult to diagnose and also remediate. So that's the holy grail. But anyway, so what's the summary we have here? The, all the so we talk a little bit about the latency mitigation, what you can do to to get it down when 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 you basically can't get the app team to do the um, to do the regular execution. Everything is pretty pretty difficult to do yourself. We we did a couple we did a couple of things uh, in our team. So 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 like we we can take things out of rotation. We automated that and and that can help with latency. We we did a write through cache. To, to basically get get a read path out of the network and all those things, but there's only we we have the active probes deployed, so we can tell you when there's a network issue. But um, but uh, in general, um, especially on the VM side, it's it's eight seconds we are talking about. So for most people, that that should be tolerable, and and all the mitigations are very difficult and with little payoff. We did them anyway, because it's who we are. And there is a good jumping off point for failure detection. So we have that too, we have failure detection. We have, we have mitigation where we can move you to different hosts and so all those things. So, but, but yeah, it's all time, it takes time. So anyway, so what's the best way to achieve low latency? Yeah, you need to plan for spare capacity. You need to have some headroom to, to basically um, can compensate if there's latency. Uh, we really, really recommend using speculative execution and rewrite the application so everything can be idempotent. So, so, so there's no need that things don't need to be idempotent. On if if it's on on your high performance path, then you just need to rearchitect, rethink the data model, and see if you can do everything idempotent. So you don't have to have that. It's all. It's at least very rare that you can't re rerun the same thing without changing state. You need to you need to monitor throughput, you need to monitor latency. So definitely monitor those things so you know when they deteriorate. And we also speaking of monitoring, we also noticed that um, so 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 so, so we, we we monitor P95, P99, and they didn't give us the whole story. So we also started to monitor this the the slowest um, the slowest request just to get an idea because. Because um, because if if you have a huge volume of requests like you're running a hundred thousand per per second, and uh, and like hundreds are 
are really, really slow, the P99 will uh, will not really reflect that very well because there's still plenty which are fast. And so, so we are really looking at nowadays at the slowest request. So what's the max in a specific time frame to, to, to see indications if there's something wrong because that, that, that will cause timeouts, slow number, but the application people will might complain and, and even it's a small number. So, so it's good to have that that number to to verify it's us or not us. Database on the database. So, so it's not just the P99s, we also nowadays measure the, the max latency. And, and our recommendation is so, 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 so that's, that's the thing I hinted to. You, you're basically in a race with, so, so it's not just you trying to fix things, there's also other teams. Uh, if you're on the cloud to try to fix things, there's a VM team, there's a host team, there's all kinds of teams. You're basically in a race with them. So, so you can say, okay, I, I will give them a chance, I let them fix it. And in most cases, they fix it, the fix will be normal after a certain amount of time. Or you can try to redeploy to a different host, and that might be. Um, that might get you out of the thing, but it takes time too. And sometimes they are faster than you. So it's a race. Sometimes they are faster, sometimes they are slower. So 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 um so you're taking a risk when you start a redeploy because you can't just say, oh, they fixed it. Now, now I'm not redeploying. You you're on this path and it takes you, let's say, five minutes to redeploy, and they might have fixed it in one minute or two minutes. But you never know. That's the thing. You never know if they do that or not. So so maybe redeploying gives you the predictability you're looking for. So anyway, since this this will be part of the online portion, so thank you. If you have questions, uh, reach out to me. Um, I'm on I'm on the Cassandra Slack at Xgerman, so you can definitely find me. And if you have questions, reach out. And thank you for listening. Hope you learned something. And yeah, and thank you a lot. Talk to you later.